How's it going? I'm Dr. Benjamin Hardy. I'm an organizational psychologist and best-selling author of multiple books, including Be Your Future Self Now, which is a breakdown of all of the latest science in positive psychology and neuroscience on the phenomenon of future self. We all have a future self, and this is becoming the biggest idea in all of psychology. It's, it, it's insanely helpful and essential for therapy, for vision, for thinking, for improving your life, for any forms of success. Future self is going to be a part of that. I'm also the author of this book, 10X is Easier Than 2X, and co-author with Dan Sullivan. Dan Sullivan has been coaching high-level entrepreneurs for 50 years. He's also the co-founder of a company called Strategic Coach. This is the third book in a trilogy that I wrote with Dan. We wrote Who Not How, The Gap and the Gain, and then this one, 10X is Easier Than 2X. I was using the language of Who Not How, the who, that decided to do this collaboration. I approached Dan, and in a video, I will share how that collaboration came about and also how it ended. But this is my third book with Dan, and I am nothing but grateful for Dan, for Babs, for that whole experience. This is the first video in a YouTube series where I'm going to break down, and there will probably be 10 to 20 videos where I break down all of the big ideas, the science, the psychology, the frameworks, and the thinking about how to go 10x and why 10x actually as a mindset is easier than 2x. In this first video, I'm going to show my screen and just break down two models. The first one is what I view as the 10x psychology model. The second one will be the core model of this book, which is an 80-20 model that describes the difference between 10x and 2x. It's really powerful, really deep. And again, this is the first video in a series where I'm going to break down all of this book. There's so many deep ideas. One thing I'll just quickly say real quick is, is that this is a very different book than Grant Cardone's book. Grant Cardone is pretty popular for popularizing the idea of 10x. He wrote the book, The 10x Rule, which I actually like a lot. I've probably read the book, The 10x Rule, three to five times. And I've actually heavily suggested it even to people in my coaching program. But this book, as you get deep into this book, and many people who have already read this book are already seeing that this book in large part is counterintuitive to Grant's concept. Actually, this book is almost the opposite and teaches, in my opinion, clear frameworks for truly how to make 10xing a continuous process in life. Grant Cardone preaches in his book to do more, 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 such as hyper, uh, hyper action, hyper, you know, and, and I think that that's really a, a beautiful mindset, especially as you're starting. But this, this is, teaches a framework for entrepreneurs and for people in general to actually go 10x by doing less. And I'm going to explain that in a second when I go into the 80-20 principle. So let me just go ahead and share my screen. And I'm going to explain to you in this first video of this series the two core models of a 10X psychology and why 10X is easier than 2X. So this is a core model for how I see 10X psychology. And throughout this series, I'm gonna break down these concepts deeper and deeper and deeper. For now, I'm just gonna give you a high level and then I'm gonna to go to the core model of this book. So 10X from my perspective comes down to three things. Number one, it comes down to your identity, two, your time, and three, your leadership. All of these things are qualitative, by the way, not quantitative. When we're talking about 10X, we usually just think about it in quantitative terms, like make 10 times more money. But really, it's the qualitative that leads to the quantitative. It's the thinking that leads to the actual actions and doing. So these are the three things that ultimately are the internal things that lead to the external. These are the causes that lead to the 10x effects. 10x effects being the quantitative external things. Identity is really two things. Your identity is your story, and it's also your standards. Your story is your narrative of both your past and your future, which ultimately combine into who you're being today. We all have a story and a narrative of our past. That story is either an asset or a liability. If it's a liability, then that means that your past is driving your present and your future. When your story becomes an asset, and Dan and I wrote about this heavily in our book, The Gap and the Gain, when your story becomes an asset, it means that you and the present are continuously reshaping and remodeling your past. Your past is not what's happening to you, it's what's happening for you. And more accurately, it's not your past that's driving your present, it's actually your present that's driving your past. I'm going to go into this very deep in other videos in this series. But the main thing here to understand is, is that identity is two things. One, it's your story. And there's a whole field in psychology called narrative identity, the theory of narrative identity. And it's all about how our, th our narrative and our language shapes our perception, our narrative of our past, our narrative of our, of our future. And you become a lot more powerful and you recognize that you're very different from your past self and you can continuously have compassion and empathy for your past self, but also you're very different from your future self. And the more you operate from your future self, and not from your past self, the more 10x becomes a possibility because 10x as an idea is a concept of operating exponentially from your future, not from your past. If you're operating from your past, that's how Dan and I view 2x. 2x is linear. It's having the past dictate the present and the present to dictate the future. 
Whereas 10X is the opposite. 10X is actually an operating from the future. So you're letting the future dictate the present. And even just as powerfully, you're letting the present dictate the past. Because in the present, you're continuously reshaping the meaning of the past. Now, the second component of identity is your floor and your ceiling. It's your standards. One of the core definitions of identity is, is it's basically the self-concept you have. It's your concept, but it's also the standards to which you are firmly committed. So we all have standards in life. Your standards are what you say yes and no to. Your standards largely are actually your floor. Often when we're thinking about people, we're thinking about their ceiling. What's their potential? But your floor is just as powerful. A big aspect of identity, because your identity is that which you're most committed to, is your floor. And as I will explain uh, in deeper sections on this course and in this series, when you start to raise up your floor, and there's some crazy examples in this book, 10x is easier than 2x. But when you start raising your floor, say, for example, you raise your floor on the food you consume, you raise your floor on the media you consume to the 80-20 principle, 80% 80 of what you consume is likely a reflection of your past, not your future. So when you raise that floor, that in and of itself transforms you at the subconscious level. And there's a great idea. And this comes from Dr. David Hawkins. He said that the unconscious will only allow you to have what you believe you deserve. So as you raise your floor, meaning you raise your standard, you raise your commitment and start saying no to things, you start becoming unaware of things that you used to be consumed by. Then on a subconscious level, boom, it vaults your ceiling 10x. So basically just to keep this simple, your identity is your story and your standards. Your time comes down to two core aspects of attention. Your time is really about your attention. In psychology, there's a concept called selective attention. Selective attention is the idea that whatever you focus on, you you create more of. Whatever you focus on, you, you expand, but also whatever you focus on, you become. Selective attention means you see what you're looking for. Dan Sullivan actually has a beautiful quote on this concept. He says that your eyes can only see and your ears can only hear what your brain is looking for. So when you start to change your goal, you start to see and look for different things. My kids, when we're driving down the street, they don't really do this anymore because they're not really looking for Teslas anymore. But a year ago or two years ago, they were always looking for Teslas. And so they would always see Teslas because that was what they were looking for. There's a great quote that I heard from Joe Polish once. He said that people are too busy looking for bronze coins that they miss the gold coins all around them. So the point here is selective attention. Whatever you see, you create more of, but you also see what you're looking for. So when you radically alter the goal, you'll start changing what you see. You'll start changing what you notice. This brings up a second aspect of attention. And there's deep models on time and attention that we go into. And 10X is easier than 2X. I'm going to go into these deeper into this video YouTube series. But there's a concept by Dr. Alan Bernard. Dr. Alan Bernard is a theorist and a researcher on what's called constraint theory, which is a decision-making theory. Dr. Alan Bernard talks about what he calls the greatest bottleneck of life, and that's actually human attention. Our attention is actually the most finite resource. It's more finite than our time. And the quality of your attention and the depth of your attention is going to determine the quality of your time and also the usefulness of your time. So Dr. Bernard talks not about return on investment or return on time, but he talks about return on attention. When you want to get 10x the value of your time, and again, this goes to qualitative, that your time is qualitative. And it also goes to Einstein's theories that time is, is relative and subjective. But your time can become qualitatively 10 times more valuable, 10 times more purposeful, 10 times more worthy and worthwhile. And even you can get to the point where on a daily basis, you can actually go deeper and get a 10 times more return on your attention in a day than you used to get in a month, in a year, in a decade. And I've seen this. I've seen where I've gone so deep. And this, this also resonates with all of the research on flow, that going deep into flow is really about quality, not quantity. It's about being absorbed in what you're doing. And then when you go really, really deep, and there's a, an awesome book on this called Catching the Big Fish. I think it's by a guy named, um, I believe it's Peter Lynch. But basically, Catching the Big Fish is all about how our consciousness is like the ocean and how most people are up at the surface. Most people are up at the surface, and so all they can see is small fish. That's like that whole idea of seeing only bronze coins, is all they can see is, is small fish. And so as you go deeper and deeper and deeper, then you'll start to see big fish, catching the big fish. And those big fish are big ideas, they're big concepts, they're big relationships, they're big opportunities. But you won't see those if you don't have space. You won't get the massive return on your attention. And in this series, I'm gonna show you a model of time so that you can start getting 10 times more out of each of your day. And you don't really want to optimize for the day. You actually want to start optimizing for bigger bigger scopes of time. For example, weeks. Optimizing for a week is much more powerful than optimizing for a day. If you're, if you're just trying to accomplish as much as you can each day, that's probably 
what we would call 2x thinking, where you're you're focused on busyness, but you're not focused on actual depth. You're actually catching a lot of small fish. But if you scoped out and went for the week, if you started optimizing for what you could accomplish in your week, and rather than trying to see how much you could do, what if you just said, what are the one, two, or three big fish I could accomplish this week? And then you start to map out your week based on those three big fish, rather than seeing how many small fish you could catch in the week. Then you start to transform what's possible. Identity is two things. Your identity is your story and your standards. Your time is really all about the quality of your attention, the depth of your attention, and the return you get on that attention. And then the third one is leadership. My PhD was on transformational leadership, and and leadership really comes down to two things. Firstly, it really does come down to trust. Trust is probably the core principle of reality. Trust is probably the core principle of society. It's also probably the core principle of, of religion and spirituality, learning to trust God, learning to love God. Love and trust go hand in hand. And so when a leader starts to trust themselves and starts to really go deep on what they most mo- most want to do, and they learn to also trust their team and maybe even get better at, at hiring or, or collaborating and teaming with people they can trust, as the leader trusts themselves and learns to better trust the team and set the team up, then the team will begin to trust themselves and trust the leader There's a theory in motivation called self-determination theory. And one of the core components of this theory, and this is a big motivational theory, is that in order for people to be heavily motivated, they have to have a sense of autonomy. They have to have a sense that they actually have ownership on what they do and how they do it. This fits with what Dan and I taught in Who Not How, that you find the who and then you let them own the how rather than you micromanaging them. As a leader trusts themselves to go deep deep, deep, deep on what matters most to them. And as they build a team that they can trust and as they give full trust to that team and they don't have to think about it anymore, back to attention, as they don't have to trust the team anymore, then that team can start to trust the leader, trust themselves, and then all can transform together. So before I break down this model, I want to say that this model didn't actually exist before Dan and I started writing this book. Dan has been teaching the idea of 10x versus 2x for a long time, but but it was never actually explicit. One of the one of the things that he said to me, which was one of the greatest compliments he ever gave me, which was when this book was done, he said, Ben, you've taken something that for 20 years has been implicit and you've made it explicit. And a lot of that had to do with this model. And truthfully, it was actually Dan that created this, but it was during the meetings. Whenever I write a book with Dan, I, I interview him and we talk on we talked on Zoom for maybe an hour at a time, probably 10 to 15 times per book. And for this book specifically, there was not actually in my opinion, a core framework or a core connecting dot to explain the ideas. And so part of my job in writing this book was to really ask hard questions, almost like an editor. I've obviously thought about the 80-20 principle a lot and know that the 80-20 principle, from my perspective, is a 10x concept, you know, in terms of focusing on the few things that matter that have the biggest upside. But Dan was the one who kind of brought this together, which I think is just really beautiful. And so let me just go ahead and explain this. So if you're going to go for 2x, what that means is that you're basically just doing more of what you're already doing, just a little bit better, or maybe just a little bit more. To go 2x, you can actually keep 80% of what you're now doing. This is why it says 80% existing. So you only have to change 20% of what you're doing to go 2x. 2x is linear. It's also an operating system where you're taking the past to determine the present, and you're using the present to determine the future. So for me, as an example, my books collectively have sold about a million copies. They've probably it's gonna It's right around there. It might even be past that at this point. But if I wanted to double that and go for 2 million copies, I could pretty much keep 80% of what I'm doing right now. So I'm using right now to determine my strategy and my focus for the future. Main point here is is that if you want to go for 2x, you can keep the 80%. You can keep 80% of what you're doing and you're going linear. 2x is not transformational. 2x is operating from the past. 10x is the opposite. 10x means that you're operating from a seemingly impossible future, which you feel called to. This, This harkens to the idea of the hero's journey and the call to adventure where you feel called to some seemingly impossible goal. And I'm going to talk about Dr. Alan Bernard's research on another video about why impossible goals are actually more practical and more simple than possible goals. But the main point here, the main insight, the main nugget that I want you to have in this video is that if you're going for 10x, what that means is that you can only keep the core 20%. You have to actually let go of 80% of your life. This is a big proposition, but there's a lot of psychology here. 80% of your life right now represents your past self and your present self, but not your future self. And so if you're going to let the future dictate the present, which is a much better approach than letting the present dictate the future, you let the future dictate what you say yes to, what you say no to, and how you operate in the present. That has a lot to do with the future self research as well, that the more connected, clear, and vivid you get on your future self, the better the decisions you can make in the present. But really, you want your future 
to be the filter for everything you do here and now. And so because 10X is such a, a high bar, that 80% of your life right now doesn't meet that bar. 80% of your life right now is actually a distraction to your 10X future self. And so you're going to have to weed it all out and go all in on the 20% that has the most relevance. And the main point here is, is that to go 10X, you have to let go of the 80% and you really have to 10X the quality of the 20%. So there's 20% of your life right now that has the most intrinsic motivation. It has the most upside, but it also has the most connection to what you feel to be important in your future. So 20% of your life right now, and it doesn't have to be perfect on this. This is just a riff off the 80-20 principle. But the core idea here is, is that you have a 20% and you have an 80%. And it's your 10x future that's going to determine which aspects of your life are in that 20% that you're going to go all in on and go deep on and transform. I'm going to kind of break this down with a story. And this is Michelangelo. Michelangelo, obviously, is the one who created the David. He created the Sistine Chapel. He did so many things. And he went 10x multiple times. His story is at the beginning of this book, by the way. But the main thing here is, is that when he created the David and he started working with the Pope on the Pope's tomb and eventually the Sistine Chapel, the Pope asked David, to explain to him, what is the secret of your of the genius behind the David? And David said, well, I stripped away or I took away everything that was not David. And that's really how 10xing works, is, is that you have a 10x future self, which is what I see as the David. And then you have an 80% that represents your past self and your present self, which you have to strip away. You have to strip away everything that's not the David. And then you go all in on the 20%. And this fits with attention, by the way, that you want to let go of the 80% of your attention that's 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 keeping you at the surface, you wanna strip that away so that it's no longer clogging any form of your cognitive load or of your decision fatigue. You, want, you don't wanna even think about that stuff so that you can go deep, 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 deep on your 20%. And as you take the 20% to 10X levels in terms of value and quality, then the quantitative starts to take care of itself. I'll give an example of myself real quick and then I'm gonna wrap up this first video and we'll go into multiple videos. Not all of them will be this long. I'm going to try to keep them about 10, 15 minutes long. But every time you go 10X, you're going to see this process. This process is in place every time you go 10X. Every time you have a 10X new future self, there's going to be an 80% you've got to let go of and a 20% that you're going to go deeper into. So for me, as an example, during 2015, 2015 was the first year of my PhD program. Me and my wife moved from Utah to Clemson, South Carolina. That was also the year we became foster parents of three kids. But it was during that year that I started to get really, really connected to my quote unquote, my 10X future self, which was me as a professional author. At that time, I was a first year PhD student, but I had no website. I'd never blogged, but I was, but I'd I'd wanted to be an author and a writer for over five years, but I'd never gotten around to actually like diving into that. I was mostly focusing up to that point on my education, getting into a PhD program. But now call it 2015, I was getting really, really clear and connected to my future self. And I did set a specific, really high vision. The vision was that I wanted to get a book deal with one of the major publishers, and I wanted a six-figure book deal so that I could provide for my family. Now, I want you to notice that that actually is a 10x vision. That's not just me writing a book. That's not just me getting a book deal for 10 or 20 grand. I literally wanted a six-figure book deal with one of the major publishers. That was a 10x vision, a big 10x future self. And from a psychology standpoint, there's a concept called deliberate practice. And deliberate practice means that the goal shapes the process. And when you set higher and higher goals, the process becomes a lot more intense. The growth curve is a lot more intense. And so this fits with the idea that 80% of what you're doing doesn't (laughs) doesn't work. You have to actually identify the core 20% and go all in on that. But the 20% for one level is going to be different for the 20% on another level. So for example, my son, and I'll, I'll share this even deeper on another video, but my son Caleb wants to play college tennis. Now, if he wanted to play pro, the 20% of going to pro would be different from the 20% of going to college. So the 20% of me just writing a book would be different from the 20% of me getting a six-figure book deal with one of the major publishers. So for me, my 10x future self was I wanted a six-figure book deal with one of the major publishers. So in order to know how to do that, and in order to define my 20%, I had to start asking a lot of questions. I started asking and interviewing professional authors, book agents, and they ultimately showed me the 20%. The 20% for me in that case was I needed to get really good at blogging. I, I needed to actually build a, an, an audience. I needed to get a big email list. I had to have at least 100,000 email subscribers in order to get that level of a book deal. And so that really clarified to me my 20%, which then I went all in on, and I started blogging on medium.com. And over a period of two to two, two to three years, I actually became the number one blogger on that platform. I took online courses that taught me how to write viral headlines, how to structure my articles, and I learned how to write in flow, and I learned how to build an email list. And so from basically 
call it summer of 2015 up until mid 2017. So for about two years, I wrote hundreds of blog posts. They were read by literally over 100 million people. And I grew an email list to over 100,000 people. I then started working with Ryan Holiday, who is an author who's written much on stoicism. And he helped me get my first book agent. He also helped me write my first book proposal. And near the end of 2017, early 2018, I ended up getting a book contract for what became Willpower Doesn't Work. And it was a $220,000 book deal. So I basically went 10x, right? I, I, I went deep on my 20%. I actually had to let go of my 80% as well, which for me actually was many different things. It was a lot of beliefs, fears about putting my ideas online. I mean, our, 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 our 80% is largely our psychology and our identity, but a lot of it also has to do with our actual life. There's a great quote actually that says that the system is designed to defend the system. Now, one of the systems is your subconscious, your past self, your hidden commitments is what Robert Keegan would call it. And I'll go deep, deep, deep on identity, but there's also an external system around you, your relationships, your your lifestyle, that is also a system that's going to defend you. The 80% will defend itself and try to keep things in place so that you don't essentially ruin things. Your, your, your psyche and your subconscious want things to be stable, but so do your relationships. And so for me, I had to let go of my university position, which was a part-time job, which paid me a little bit, but it also allowed me to get free tuition in my PhD program. I let that go when I went all in to become a professional writer. And I just had, I had to pay my own tuition out of pocket. I was the only PhD student doing that, at least where I was at. So my 20%, which I went all in on was blogging and I went and I got 10 times better. That's the key is 10 times better proceeds 10 times bigger. So I got 10 times better at blogging and I went 10x, meaning I, got, I now had 100,000 plus email subscribers, and I achieved my 10x goal of getting up that mountain and ultimately becoming my 10x feature self, which was now I had a six-figure book deal. So I had gone 10x, but here's kind of the main key, is that once you go 10x, this process takes over. I, I now had a new 80%, and guess what was in that new 80%? Blogging. I now no longer, it now no longer made sense for me to keep blogging like I did before, because now my new 10x on, from my new mountain, I could see a new mountain and each 10x is nonlinear. It's not just about doing 10 times more of what you've already done. It's about what is now the new 10x from where you're at. And it's key to know that your future self is different than you. So once I went 10x, it was no longer about continuing to grow my platform or my blogging. Blogging went to my 80% and so did many other things. And I now had a new 20% to go deep on and transform. Every time you go 10x, there's going to be a new 80% to let go of and a new 20% to go all in on. And I'm going to go deeper and deeper into all of this. If you have not read 10X is Easier Than 2X, please do. Please subscribe to this channel. And I'm excited to just take you all the way through. This is going to be a huge 10X versus 2X series. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm also going to do a series on Be Your Future Self Now. Thank you for being on my YouTube channel. Please like, please subscribe, and enjoy. Talk to you later.